we'll go back to when you took charge of the team and just what were your impressions of the team then? They were a brilliant group of players. What did you feel they were kind of almost lacking just to take them to that next level? Yeah, I think it's, it's a very interesting aspect because when I arrived, I was uh, straight away engaged with the enormous individual talent that a country of 11 million people would have in the same generation. So then you try to find out how did that happen? And then you see that part of it was a real clear structure and it was a thought around a table. And then it's been that the development of these individuals, they've gone abroad and they've gone into a path that they take them into the best level of, of world football. And that's a combination. So now at that point, it was making sure that we, get, we, we could get a, a clear direction of um, talent on his own couldn't win. And I think from that point, it's just everyone buying into creating an environment that first, it was clarity for everyone. And second, that we had to start uh, having that reason of being together and the reason to be together was to create moments that everyone could treasure when everyone is retired. And the second is to, to create a legacy for generations to come that they feel part of the next step rather than making a big gap that it makes it impossible to, to, to replace. And that, that was the, um, the clear approach that we had for the World Cup 2018, that we were ready to suffer together, that we were ready to create a team that we knew that individually we could never reach any target unless we were prepared to put the individuals at the service of the team. And I know it's, it sounds like a topic, it sounds like a basic, but I think the difficulty is to get the individuals to commit to do that. And I think that's been the real enjoyment from my end, that in the last four years I've seen a, a group of individuals becoming a real core of a team that has got a real purpose and it has got the responsibility of passing the know-how and the experience to the younger players and make them almost give them a clear idea of what it takes to be number one in the world. It's incredibly difficult to get to number one in the world, but it's perhaps even harder to stay at number one in the world. That sort of mentality within the team, is that something you've seen develop? Talking to Kevin and Romelu yesterday, they were saying, you know what, semi-final was great in 2018, but that's not good enough. We want to win now. Like We're at the point whereby we don't want to be there to to get a pat on the back, even though it was an amazing moment in the formation of this team. We want that silverware. Is this a change that you've seen? Perhaps players being more bullish, perhaps more confident, more, you know, what, backing themselves? Yes. Yeah, I think everything starts with a mentality. And that mentality is very difficult to affect without success on the pitch. That's for sure. But I think this group of players, they brought the demands of club level. You're talking about players that they are demanded to win titles at their clubs and demanded to win every game. And that mentality, we try to carry it and protect it and bring it to international football. To be number one in the world, you need to have the talent, that's for sure. But it's more important to stay there that you are consistent. And consistent doesn't mean that you need to have 11 players at their best. And consistent may, means that you need to have 25, 30 players, that they are committed, that they are ready to, to come in. And the different challenge in international football is to go uh, away to uh, a San Marino game, to play at home against against uh, Switzerland, to face a uh, different type of 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 of, uh, of games in the middle of very difficult seasons for the players, and that is what we're trying to work on. And having an environment that everyone knows that they are important, and everyone knows that they need to be ready for whenever the opportunity arises but that they need to bring those uh, standards that every, every game really matters. And that's the only way that you can maintain that position. Because you look at all the games nowadays, everyone has information, an international coach has a month to prepare a game. Everyone has got all, all their footage. Uh, any team can make a very, very difficult game if you're not at your, at your, at your sharpest. And, and that's what international football brings. What um, about the this sort of group at the moment? Um, you're looking at the, the sort of the, the age profile. Do you think these guys need a trophy to really cement themselves in Belgian folklore? We saw the, the reaction you got two years ago. Um, it is two years ago. Crikey, that seems a long time ago now, eh? Exactly. But when you came back, like the square in Brussels was full, the country was united. But to really kind of take these guys into like the immortal category as such, do you think they need it? Uh, I think it will be... I wouldn't say that they need it. 
Mm -hmm. I think that Belgian football would benefit a lot immensely. I think that the players, after the four years I work with them, they deserve it. But um, of course, it's a goal and it's something that we all fight for. Um, I think the, the scenes of 2018 when we arrived in Belgium probably stimulated every individual in the best possible manner to try to reach the next level. Um, a nation totally united with, with a, a team that it makes you believe that you can achieve anything in life. In such a, a, a specific country, as I mentioned, with three official languages, it's just they were, they were not uh, a doubt what was the idea of celebrating. Uh, beating Brazil in a World Cup makes you participate in a World Cup in a different manner that you would do without playing against Brazil. And I think there are elements there, the bronze medal, that um, everyone had the reason to celebrate. But there is no uh, way that these players will be just happy to play for a national team without the goals. And the goal has to be to, to get one better of what we did in the World Cup. But I don't think they need it um, as individuals. I think that's something that they want to fight for but I think it will be um, probably the missing piece in order to leave that legacy uh, in a way that Belgium could really benefit from it. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.